Press charges? There is nothing we can do if you don't press charges. Okay then. You're on your own out here. Wait. Could I have a ride? place you need some help getting out trial lawyer he'll always tell you that he's never defended a guilty man <laughs> oh come on they've got to know that can't be true it's not your job to determine guilt or innocence if lawyers are all that smart we could throw away the jury system altogether right uh, we made waffles there's still better left by the stove i'll just have coffee it just seems absurd that you're supposed to try an entire case and never even wonder if your client's guilty my Buzzy, the lawyer. I just hope I get the family discount when you have to bail me out of jail. Right. Hmm. Hey, boy. Isn't Peaches walking a little funny? Oh, I don't believe it. They've closed the beach again because of the pollution. Yeah, Joni, maybe you better run him in for a checkup. Hmm. Oh, I'll call later. All right, troops. Now that I have everybody here, Chancellor Krell is returning from Europe this week, and... Friday night, we're having a little dinner party in his honor here. <laughs> Ask Amy if she wants to come. All right. <laughs> um, I've, I've kind of got plans that night. Well, maybe you better change them. Well, I don't see why I have to be here. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Claire. That's the deal around here. See, I pay for the waffles, and all you have to do is pretend you're part of this family every once in a while. OK. I'll pretend. All right, let's go. We've got a bad day. Uh, I've got the meeting tonight. I may be late. Right. to you, the coming years are going to be very tough. Long hours of memorization, grueling exams, and that most burdensome hardship of all, 
the non-stop barrage of lawyer jokes coming at you from everybody you ever met. <laughs> Seriously, the legal profession has taken a lot of knocks in the last few years. But make no mistake, a career in law is a career of honor, integrity, and real service. I want to thank Dean McGrath for stopping by and talking to us today. Thank you very much. Well, they look like a pretty good group. Well, they all look good when they're virgins. You give them a couple of months of all-nighters and see how they look then. I don't want you going soft on Ben, either. Me? Soft on the Dean, son? Shoo. What do you take me for? Some sort of spineless, brown-nosing weasel? Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, you remember the old days, Mel? You remember flirting with students? What's happened to our profession? Now you get caught looking at a gal's legs, they chop you up in little bits, they fertilize the quad with you. Academia just ain't what it used to be. Harold Beck. Yes. We've spoken before. Of course. How are you, Mr. Beck? Sometimes they just need a little time to find themselves. Well, you wouldn't think it would be a full-time job finding yourself, but for Claire, apparently it is. <laughs> She's still doing her artwork, isn't she? Oh, wherever it's leading. In mm. fact, can you finish this? I want oh, to check sure. and see if she's on schedule. Oh, just some lame family thing. Yeah. OK, yeah, I'll call you when I'm done. OK, bye. You better get ready. The Chancellor will be here in half an hour. I am ready, Mom. Oh, honey, I'd, why don't you wear your beige dress? Because I look like Mrs. Doubtfire in it. Oh, come on, Claire. This isn't a frat party. Madrid is beautiful, but Istanbul has such a, such a sense of history. Mm. Huh? I understand I missed quite a track meet this weekend. Oh, yes, you yes, did. You did. Yeah. Ben won the 500 meters. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said you two have the perfect relationship. Between med school and law school, you never have time to argue. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Sorry I'm late. It took forever to decide on just the right outfit to wear. Well, I didn't expect to see Claire this evening. Well, that's Claire, always full of surprises. Hello? So I understand you're at Cal State Northridge. Was, yes. I dropped out a couple of months ago and moved home. Actually flunked out. I'm the designated family screw up. I mean, there I am, first day out of law school, and this defendant takes the stand. It was a uh, traffic violation. And he launches into this huge tirade about uh, how after the revolution, 
all jury trials will be conducted in total nudity. Because, <laughs> as we all know, total honesty can only be achieved by total nudity. <laughs> I was clerking for Joan's father then, Judge Frederick Patrick Hewitt. Yeah. And Joan Hewitt? Why is that so familiar? Oh. Are you Joan Hewitt the lawyer? Well, I was, I guess. <laughs> You litigated that huge class action suit, the, the one about the faulty seatbelts. Uh, well... What was that, 15 years ago? 1982. She was on the front page of the paper the day she won. Sure, that's right. Whatever happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you were quite a rising star, as I recall. Well, Joan retired to spend more time with the family. The kids were pretty small. Then. Oh, well, that's too bad. Uh, you could have given old Malcolm here a real run for his money. <laughs> well, what friend? Bingo. This is wonderful. You like that? Yeah. I hope you got a chance to speak to Allison tonight. She was telling me how much Zach is enjoying San Diego State. Yeah. It's a beautiful campus. Mom, I'm not really thinking about school right now. No, you should be thinking about doing something. If you're not going back to school, you need to get a job. But we're not going to go on supporting you forever. You know? Well, you don't seem to mind supporting Ben forever. Yes, ben is in law school. Oh, law school. How could I forget? Might as well be studying for the priesthood. What now, Claire, look, it's been three months since you quit school. I don't know where this is leading. But you spend all day sitting in that room and all night running around with your friends. It, it, you have to do something productive with your life. Oh, you mean like you did. Mama, I'm sorry, I didn't... Mm. Chuck's waiting in the car. Yeah, uh, Mom. This is Donna. Hello. Uh, well, we're gonna go check out this new club, so... But now? Claire, it's nearly midnight. Yeah, Mom. That's when the band starts warming up. Hi. You remember the time she came home with a ring in her nose, right? Best thing we ever did was not pay any attention to her at all. I know. I just get so frustrated with her. Trust me, as soon as she realizes she's not driving us crazy anymore, she'll get bored and get on with her life. Mm. It's a beautiful party, Johnny. Thank you. Mm. You must be exhausted. I'm not that exhausted. Uh, yeah, channel three, ten o'clock. You'd think they'd give you a little more time to prepare. Well, I don't know. Somebody canceled on it at the last minute. Oh, well, I'll call Ben. He's going to be at Amy's tonight. I know they want to watch. Okay. Mwah. I, you'll be brilliant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, we may go out for a drink or something afterwards. I may be kind of late. Hmm. Have fun. Hello? Eileen, this is Harold Beck. Yes. Mr. Beck, how are you? Joining us now with some insight on the Bennett murder trial is Malcolm McGrath, dean of one of the more prominent law schools in the area. Now, Dean, with this much public attention, is selecting an impartial jury a real problem? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what you have to remember is that nine times out of ten, a jury will come to a trial with no preconceived opinions about the guilt or innocence of a defendant. Now, in a case like this, with all this pre-trial publicity. It's very hard to find 12 jurors who have made up their minds. Exactly. So so what do you do? It's a balance, really, between the public's right to know and, uh, and the, the defendant's right to a fair trial. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult problem. It's a problem that I don't think we have resolved uh, satisfactorily. Hello. I'm Harold Beck. Yes? It's Lana. I'm a friend of Eileen.
Claire. Hey, Claire, um, how did it go with Harold Beck? It didn't work out. What? Uh, it just didn't work out, I'm sorry. Look, Claire, I know he's a little bit older than what you're used to, but... <gasps> yeah, I, I mean... Oh, look, he's always been cool with the other girls. I hear he's an easy date. You were great. What? No, on TV tonight, you were great. Now I'm gonna have to refund this guy. Trust me, he is not gonna be asking for his money back. Good boy. Good boy. Hmm. The vet thinks the medicine will help him walk a little better. Yeah, I hope so. Sweetheart, are you sure plain fruit is enough? I thought you runners all liked lots of carbos on the day of a big race. That's what everyone else eats. That's why they can't catch me. <laughs> <laughs> There's coffee. By the way, Coach said he'd save you guys some seats down front, but you got to get there by 1245. Mm. Great. You can sit with your family. We don't bite. You should eat something. We're going to leave around 1230. We won't be back home till 4. I'll, uh, I'll take my own car out. Meet you there. Oh, Claire, come on. I mean, Ben's races are about the last thing we do as a family together. I mean, you can ride with us. Is everything all right now? Yeah, I'm fine. Ooh, just seems so quiet. Well, I guess I feel quiet. Hi, we're almost ready. We'll meet you in the car in five minutes. Mom? Yeah? Nothing. You look nice. Oh. <laughs> Did you all go out after the show last night? Yes. Oh, what'd you do? We just had a drink, Joan. That's oh. all. We went out and we had a drink. What are you doing here? You won't believe the rumor I heard this afternoon. Crowell is talking about retiring. As in Chancellor of the whole damn university, Marvin Crowell. You know what this means? You play your cards right, and it's Chancellor time for you, Bubba. I hadn't heard. Oh, yeah, well, you deans are always the last to know. We props are closer to the ground. Uh, we hear the distant beat of the drums or something like that. I tell you, throwing that welcome home dinner, that was a slick move, Malcolm. Are you okay? What's going on, Mal? Trouble with Joan? That's nothing. Claire. Wow. That is so bizarre. I mean, what did you say to him? Did you just walk away? Or... What did he say? Uh, he didn't say anything either. <laughs> did you tell Eileen? No. I don't know. I, I just didn't want to talk about it. So you really think he's not even going to tell your mom, huh? Are you kidding? And blow his own cover? No. Not my dad. He'll never tell a soul. You know what would be good right now? Some vanilla Swiss almond. I'll get it. No, are you sure? I'll go. No, no, I'll get it.
Why? You've got everything in the world going for you, everything a person could want. Why? You go first, Dad. Why? Mal! French, white, you did say fish. What I said. Where's Claire? Oh, she's got a headache. She said to send her love. No, no, no. I want the whole McGrath experience. Ah, there she is. Claire! Come on! Well, I have to say, at least the department's running like a top so far this year, but then that's the thing about law school. It appeals to staid types. <laughs> How are you? Oh, it's much more exciting than law. We English professors have always been very big on scandal and intrigue. Uh, you all know Joyce Wiswell? Oh. Sure. Well, last week, she came home and walked right in on her husband with a grad student. No. On top of a washing machine, no less. <laughs> I believe that's what you lawyers would call a compromising position. Oh, my God. <laughs> Poor woman, she was just devastated. Caught her completely off guard. Oh, women are so dumb, aren't they? They never say anything till they step right in it. Oh, I think a woman always knows. It might be unconscious, but she knows. But men are such good liars. I mean, how can a woman know anything when her husband might look her right in the eye and lie with a straight face? People see what they want to see, and mm -hmm. they don't see what they choose not to. Besides, I don't know that uh, always telling the truth in every situation is necessarily... You see, that, that is exactly what I'm talking about. Not only do they lie, they lie about why they're lying. There's always some excuse. Usually it has to do with how they have to protect some poor, weak woman. Uh, Anybody like some coffee? And that way, see, that way, they can screw around on their wives and feel self-righteous about it at the same time. Let's go out in the kitchen. I'll put on some coffee. Which reminds me of a great joke. Y'all like dirty jokes, don't ya? Okay, so there's this married guy, right? And he goes to a hotel and he calls up for a hooker. So about 10 minutes later, there's this knock on the door. That's what this is. It's a knock-knock joke. Claire. So the hooker goes, knock-knock. And the guy goes, who's there? And then... Claire, nobody wants to hear your jokes. What's wrong, Daddy? Did I lose you? You don't know what a hooker is? Claire, what is the matter with you? Is she in school now, or...? What the hell is the matter with you? Do you have any idea what it would do to your mother if she found out about this? Any idea at all? You're worried about Mom? Well, you can think what you like about me. Believe me, I'm not proud of myself. Not proud at all. And if you want to go and throw your life away, there's not much I can do to stop that. But I will not allow you to ruin your mother's life because of this you thing. Get I will out. not allow it. You get out of my room! After all she's done for you. After all the years of sacrifice. Shut up! Just leave me alone! Haven't you brought her enough grief already? Haven't you caused enough trouble around here for 19 long years? We have not begun to talk about you. And believe me, we will. But I will not stand by and see her destroyed. This incident you will take with you to your grave. She will never find out about this, you understand me? Never.
was dreaming about lying under the piano. Remember how I used to do that? Oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I was so little. I must have been four. I remember every night after work, he used to come home and play the piano. And I'd lie right underneath. And I'd watch your feet working the pedals. It seemed like the most amazing thing in the world to me. How your feet could work those pedals. I'm surprised you can remember it at all. Why'd you quit, Mom? You played so beautifully. You quit working and you quit the piano. It seems like all of a sudden you just quit. I, um, I think I should put those things away. Do you remember that little song you taught me? I bet I still remember it. I got um, ice cream in the bag here. Um, what was it? It was it was by Brahms or someone, wasn't it? Dum, dum, Is it the same, Mom? No, I... I've got to do this. Your father's working late. Oh, going to another conference in the city? Uh-huh. Well, he certainly goes to a lot of conferences in the city. Well, well, Claire, you know, I'm sick, of, I'm sick of this attitude. Your father works very hard for this family. And if he has to work late, then so be it. Fine. If you want to live your life with a blindfold on, go ahead. Now, what the hell is that supposed to mean? It means he's cheating on you, Mom. How dare you? Who the hell do you think you are to talk to me I just can't like that? stand to watch him take advantage. Take advantage? Yes. But you're the only person in this family that I see that's taking Mom, advantage. Mom, I'm trying to tell you the what truth. What is the matter with you? Me? But your life is such a mess that you My have to make life. everybody else's Mom, life miserable. Listen, no, I have had truth. it. I've had it up to here. And I want you out of this house. Fine. That's a great idea. Well, maybe you should have had it yourself months ago. Hello? Hey. It's me, Claire. Hey, what's up? I just had this huge fight with my mom. I'm going crazy over here. I've got to, I've got to get out of here. Hey, Donna, I'm going for smokes. You want anything? No. Listen, why don't you crash here for a while? We hardly use that second bedroom. Really? What about Chuck? Chuck's not gonna mind. Come on, Claire. It'll be perfect, the three of us. Claire. OK. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there first thing in the morning. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. OK. Oh, hey, by the way, Eileen called. Uh-huh. She's got a big party in Malibu on Saturday. A bunch of political studs from Washington are in town. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. You down for it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm down. Still up? I couldn't sleep. How was your day? Different. How so? I had a terrible fight with Claire, and I threw her out of the house. How did that happen? I'm just so fed up with her constant sarcasm and her lies. I mean, she's always trying to undermine this family whenever she can, and I... You know, I mean, she's spoiled, is what she is. And if she's not going to go back to school, she's got to pull herself together and get a job and start supporting herself. What kind of lies? What? Well, you said she was lying. What kind of lies was she telling? Lies. 
Malcolm, I know they were lies. Why repeat them? Well, you're right. Whatever it is she's going through, she's going to have to learn to face the real world and solve some of her problems on her own. What's going on, Dad? Said you were moving out. Yeah, looks like that's what's happening. Hey, what's going on, Claire? Why is everybody acting so weird around here? It's a weird family, Ben. I've been telling you that for years. Damn it, why do you have to be so difficult all the time? I just want a straight answer. Why are you moving out? I, I don't understand. Well, you're 22 and you're still living with your daddy, so you wouldn't, would you? Everything all right? Yeah, everything's fine. I'll meet you at the car. Your brother seemed very upset. Did he? You didn't tell him. Guess you'll never know. I, uh... I, th I thought you might need some things. I thought you might need some money. I don't want your money. Here, I, you forgot this. I don't need it, Mom. Is there anything you want to say? You mean something like I'm sorry, something like that? Anything at all. All right. Be careful. Mom, there is something. Have you ever wondered why Dad has been so mad at me lately? Or how I know that he's been cheating on you? It's because I'm a prostitute. It's true. I take money from men for sex. Now I'll give you three guesses how Daddy found out about that. Six girls. <laughs> no, no, yes. You get six girls. All night. Uh-huh. Right. No, all night long. Yeah. That's right. Until the next morning. Okay. Have fun. Okay. Goodbye. Oh, out of towners. Claire, hi, how are you? Hi. Fine. Oh, sit down. Sure. Would you uh, like a cappuccino or something? Oh, no, I'm fine, thanks. You sure? Mm -hmm. Here you go. Thank you. So, what's up? I hear that you're moving out with Donna. Yeah, living at home was just getting insane. I mean, I'm a little too old to still be being yelled at for staying out past my bedtime. Well, no more mom and dad, no more school. Welcome to the real world, kiddo. Which is actually what I wanted to talk to you about. Now that I'm on my own, mm -hmm. I was hoping that maybe I could start dating a little more often, maybe two or three times a week. 
Actually, I've been waiting for you to come around. It's like I always told you, Claire. Twice the work, twice the money. I just don't want to burn out. Ugh. Relax. You are going to be great. Besides, six months from now, the only thing you're going to have to worry about is what to do with all that money I made you. Mm -hmm. Well, duty calls. You stay and have fun. Hey, Claire. Hey. I heard you saw that Harold Beck guy last week. Yeah. Uh, things got a little weird, so I walked. Because I dated him like a month or two ago, and there was no problem. I mean, got right down to business. Was out the door within an hour. She probably got some, like, poor, pathetic wife waiting up for him at home. She must be miserable, married to scum like that. Joan? There you are. I thought you'd gone out. Is she gone? Don't take this too hard, Joan. We did the right thing. Sooner or later, all these kids have to leave the nest, try to fly on their own. Is there something you want to tell me? Is there something you want to tell me? Let's not play games, Joan. What did she say? She said she was a prostitute. And that you found out. But what did she mean, Mel? How did you find out? She said, what? You're going to lie to me, aren't you? Or what, is it that easy to lie to me? No. Now, think carefully. I mean, this is a very important moment in your life, Malcolm. Well, say something! Joan. Claire is very mixed up kid right now. She's very angry. She's very disturbed. She would say anything. You, know, you sound very scared, Malcolm. You sound very scared to me. I'm not scared, Joan. I'm just trying to explain. The truth. Malcolm, I want the truth. The truth is I found out about her. Now, how did you find out? I mean, what the hell happened between you two? What, did you bump into her in some motel or something? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I... <gasps> it was the night I did the news show. I called an escort service. Went to a hotel. Claire showed up at the door. I, I didn't want you to know. There was no point, Joan. I, I wanted to protect you from... Oh, protect me, you bastard! Oh, Joan. No, just stay away from me. Get away from me. You son of a bitch. How come you son of a bitch? Joan. Joan, please, open the door. Joan. This has something to do with Claire moving out, doesn't it? Your mother and I are having a little argument. We'll get through it. Maybe I should go see at Amy's for a few days. Probably a good idea. Joan. Now, come on, Joan. Joan.
No, no, don't even speak to me. Don't say a word. Joan. No, I mean it, Malcolm. Believe it or not, there are more important things on my mind right now. Hey, Joe, give me a beer. Hey, Claire, are you checking out that party tonight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be cool, a lot of film people, live band. Listen, um, would you be up for hanging out with Jimmy afterwards? Are you talking about hanging out or are you talking about a date? I'm talking about a date. I can't pay you what I've been paying you, but you know, you don't have to get all dressed up for Jimmy either. You know, I think I'm just gonna stick with the Eileen thing for now. It's, it's plenty for me. Okay. Cool, cool. Well, here's the thing. I've been talking to Donna about starting things up myself. We don't need Eileen. Three of us stick together, we make twice as much money and we call our own shots. Think about it. Hey, Jimmy, I think her name was Amber or something. There should be a number around here somewhere for her, all right? Hi. I'm looking for Claire McGrath. Yeah, her and Donna should be back in just a minute. Ah, uh, well, I'll wait. OK. Come on in. She and Donna just went to the market. They'll be back any minute. You're uh, Claire's mom? Uh, yes, and what? You must be her pimp. <coughs> hey, uh, you know, lady, you're in my place here. You want to sit and wait? That's fine. Just show a little respect, all right? Oh, and what about you? Am I supposed to respect? Mom, what are you doing here? Come on, Claire, you're going home. Uh, no, you just kicked me out. No, I remember? know, but let's just go. That's just no, too you weird. just come in here and start clear That's lecturing me. What you're doing, the, the danger that you're in. Oh, Mom, just save the lecture for the PTA. No, I am not going to let you just throw your life away like this. You oh, know, I just won't. Really? Well, it isn't really your decision, is it? Before you start in on me, you better take a good look at your own life, Mom. Look at who you sleep with every night. Anything else? Bye, thanks. Why did I stop playing the piano? What? Don't you remember I used to play the piano every night when I got home from work? I used to work hard at my job. I practiced the piano. I had a little girl who loved me. Do you remember that? Remember how close we were? I mean, she used to lie into the piano every night and listen to me practice. Do you remember that? John, what are you talking about? Talking about the last 14 years of my life, Malcolm. Joan, working was very, very stressful for you. I know, and you couldn't wait for me to quit. Malcolm, I had a life. What happened to it? 
I mean, how did I become one of those people who just fixes dinners and hosts parties and laughs at my husband's jokes? You know, while our daughter is lying on her back in some hotel somewhere. Tony, don't do this to yourself. Don't blame yourself for this. I never said I was blaming myself. Hello? Eileen? This is Harold Beck. We need to talk. This is about one of your girls. A girl named Lana. Hey, where are we meeting those guys again? Beverly Hills, where else? Oh. Money, money, money. I'll get it. Hey, I mean, we were just getting ready. Yeah, I'm sorry, I should have come by earlier. <sighs> Claire, I can't use you anymore. I'm sorry. What? what? What do you mean you can't use me anymore? I just moved out of my house. What am I supposed to do for money? It's that Harold Beck. I don't know what he is to you. The truth of the matter is, I don't think I want to know. But he's threatening to bust me because of you, and I just can't risk it. I hope you understand. Take care. Oh, and Claire, can you tell Donna that Heather's going to meet her at the bar tonight? Hey, who was that? It was Eileen. She's not going to use me anymore. What? Yeah, Daddy's still trying to control my life. I'm telling you, Claire, you don't need Eileen. I can get you all the work you want. Great. Give me all you got. Hey. How's it going? Left the door open. Jimmy, my man. Duckstead. I got some great news oh. for you. You're about to begin the greatest night of your entire life. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. The greatest night of your entire life. Sunset Boulevard until you've seen him from the back of a Harley. Huh. I almost forgot. I got a call this afternoon, Claire. You might have a date later on. Tonight? Yeah, some business type. A lot of dough. I don't know about tonight. I'm exhausted. Claire, we got to take the jobs when they come. You know that. Chuck, if she wants to sleep, let her sleep. Hey! Nobody asked your opinion, Donna. Claire. <clears throat> We're on a roll here. Things are just starting to fall in place. Let's not screw everything up before we get started. You sleep when you're old, all right? Ben, what are you doing? Oh, well, you tell me, Claire. What's going on? Uh, Hold on here. You want to talk to her, you talk to me first, all yeah, right? Who the hell are you? Who the hell am I? Who the hell are you, hey, huh? Hey, we need your hey, hands hey, up, hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Uh -huh. We're all there in the locker room, and this guy's going on and on with this story. This very funny story about how he's at this bachelor party, and he's waiting for these hookers to show up. All of a sudden, he turns around, and guess who's standing at the door? The dean's daughter. That's what he says, Claire. He's looking right at me, and he said, the dean's daughter. It's true. Come on, Claire. Quit screwing around. He said you're a whore. I don't even know how it happened exactly. I was living in Venice, and, and school sucked. Then I met Donna, and we started going out, partying, meeting different guys. Oh, come on. Then she introduced me to Eileen. And nobody cared that my name was McGrath. Nobody cared how I did in school. 
For the first time in my life, I was the center of attention. I don't know what to tell you, Ben. I guess I finally found something that I'm good at. Dad found out, didn't he? That's why he's been so mad at you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He found out, all right. Yeah, well, what about Mom? How could you do this to her? Yeah, well, tell her I'm sorry, all right? I guess I screwed up once again. I'm such a lousy daughter. Big surprise, huh? So, what, this is what you're gonna do with the rest of your life now? Is that it? Well, you sure know how to screw up a family. It's like a bomb went off in that house. Dad's sleeping in the study. Mom won't let him near her. Poor Dad. I don't know why she's got to blame him for everything. Yeah, well, maybe she figured out a couple things for herself. Oh, yeah? Like what, Claire? Huh? Like, like what? Like, maybe you shouldn't worship him so much, Ben. Like, maybe he's not so perfect. He sees women. Women who do what I do. I wanted to confirm in person the rumor. I'm sure you've all heard by now anyway. Come June, I'll be retiring as chancellor of this university. Phil Peterson, up in San Francisco, will be chairing the search committee to fill the position. Short list of four candidates has already been drawn up. And while I really shouldn't divulge who those candidates are, Malcolm, he's asked me to inform you that the committee would like to speak with you up in San Francisco next week. Good luck, Mal. There you go. I think it's a little early for all this celebrating. Oh, you? come on, Mal. You were born for this. Ben, did you hear the news? Here, I have a brandy. I want to talk to you. In a minute, Ben. Yeah, in a minute, Ben. Come on. A toast to the old man. Yes. To our next and finest chancellor. I think we should talk uh, now. A man of leadership, a man of character, a man about whom we can say with certainty. I think we should talk now. Seeing whore's dad cheating on mom for how long? For how many years? Huh? Lower how your long? Voice, please. How long? Since we were little kids? How could you do that? I thought you loved mom. This is no place to have this conversation. What better place could there possibly be? This is the place we search for the truth. Remember? God, I mean, this whole family, was it all just a lie? A wife and some kids, just something you whipped up to help your career? You know, when I was a kid, this building was the most beautiful thing in the world to me. It was my dad's building. The law building. All these wonderful things. Honor and integrity. Valor. All those big words. You taught me all those big words, Dad. Is Ben there with you? No, Ben, it's ridiculous. You can't drop out of law school in your first semester. I'll live at Amy's. I'll get a job somewhere. What? Doing what? Working in a burger joint. Oh, yes. Now, what is that going to prove? I can't keep going back to that campus and face seeing him every day. Yes, you can. You can. You will. Uh... No, ben, look, if you give up now, if you run away, you'll be running away from him for the rest of your life. I don't want to talk about it anymore. How can you stay with him? Mama, how can you sleep in the house? Because I'm not ready to give up yet, Ben. I'm not ready. I've been married for 25 years. Our family is everything that I know and that I love. And if I leave now, too, 
I mean, there's no family anymore. Ben, stay in school. Don't let him ruin everything you've worked so hard for. Completely. <laughs> I'm gonna need to sleep for a week. Hey. You okay? Yeah. Just thought I saw someone I knew earlier. Well, if you're ever in town again, give Chuck a call. He always knows where to find me. Thanks, hon. Joni, we've lost so much already. Let's not lose each other. Yeah. I'll be back after tomorrow. I'll be at the ambassador in San Francisco. Leave me now, too, aren't you? Peaches to sleep. And I don't want to do it alone. Claire! Remember the first day I brought Peaches home? Mm. Oh, he was so dumb and so happy, yeah. peeing all over himself. Yeah, I remember it was my birthday. <laughs> right, that's right. And you were at work all day. Mm -hmm. And every 10 minutes, I kept asking Dad, when is Mommy coming home? <laughs> and he promised that you would be home at 6 o'clock. I know, and I was. I was. On the dot. And there you were, standing there with that little puppy in your arms. Aww. Yeah, you, and you had to call him Peaches. You yeah, well, that, it was because the cake, remember? The right? pie. I mean, you were going to make a cake, but I made you make a pie. No, that's right. I remember Ben so made a peach pie that night. So we put candles in it, <laughs> and we had to call him Peaches. Well, we were pretty happy then for a while, weren't we? Yeah. I'm sorry I had to go and mess it up so bad. No, no. Mom. No, Claire, I... I've done a lot of thinking in the last while. And it seems that... 
somewhere along the way, way back when. I, it's like I got scared, I, and I stayed scared. And I started letting Malcolm make all kinds of decisions for me. I just shut down. And I left you to fend for yourself. Now, I'm... I'm the one that should apologize, Claire. I haven't been a very good mother for you. And I hope that you'll give me a second chance. And please come home, Claire. Give me another chance. Please. I thought I might start practicing again. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, uh, Lise called. She thought maybe for your birthday, we, the four of us could get together and have dinner or something. No, I don't think so, Matt. I don't feel much like celebrating. It's not for me, it's for Mom. I'm worried about your mother, Ben. She's not doing well. She's so, she's so depressed. You know, she's so alone all the time. She won't let me anywhere near her. And so this is why I thought a birthday party, a surprise party for her, you know, with all of her friends and, and especially her family. It might be just the thing to snap her out of this. Please, Ben. Say you'll come to this thing. It would mean so much to her, you know, to have all of us under one roof for one evening. Okay, I'll be there. And listen, ask your sister, will you? I think it'd be easier for her to 
accept an invitation from you. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, man. Amy and I have been living together. We've even talked about getting married. <laughs> Maybe. In like a year. We'll, we'll see. Married? Wow. Well, I guess someone in the family's got to do it. It's Mom's birthday, Friday. Yeah, I know. There's going to be a surprise party for her at the house Friday night. I'd like you to come. I don't think so. Just, just for a couple of hours. I'm just... not going back to that house, Ben. Not while he's there. You just listen to me. Just stop being difficult for two seconds. Yeah, well, I'm a difficult girl, remember? I gotta go. All right, all right, look, look, Claire, Claire. It's not his party. It's hers. Think about how much it would mean to her to see us all together again. Come on. Claire, it's her birthday. Okay. I guess a couple hours won't kill me. But this is for you, Buzzy. Consider it an early wedding present. I'm telling you, Richard, timing is everything. It just so happens today is my wife's birthday. Just so happens Dr. Phil Peterson, the head of the search committee, flying in from San Francisco this afternoon, and yes, he would love to attend my party tonight. I gotta hand it to you now. You're the only guy I know who could turn his wife's birthday party into a savvy political event. Hi, Jimmy. Is this my imagination, or are people looking at me funny today? Um, to tell you the truth, there's uh, there's been a, a rumor floating around. What, that I'm the new chancellor? That's nice, but premature. No. Actually, um, it's not about you at all. It's a rumor about Claire. Got my mom for her birthday. It's really pretty. Ooh, that's beautiful. She's gonna love it. Yeah, she is. Donna, what happened? Oh, it's nothing. I just fell off the chair last yeah. night. You got it. Anything, anytime. And, uh, All right. See you. She wasted once again. <clears throat> Good news, girls. So I got a date for both of you tonight. Word's out, money's rolling in. Well, I can't tonight. What do you mean you can't, Claire? Friday's our best night of the week. I think you know that. Yeah, I know that. I said I can't. Tonight's my mom's birthday party. Oh, it's a happy little family all going out to celebrate. Is that what's going on? I just don't want to work tonight, OK? All right. You're working tonight. Will you want strike two? Come here for a sec. I want to talk to you. Donna, come here. Come here. What time is the surprise? I forgot to ask. Claire, it's a surprise party. You got to be there for the surprise. not here yet. I just need to know what time to come tonight. Oh, did Ben ask you to come? Yeah. He didn't tell you? Why, Dad? You don't want me to come? It's not a question of what I want, Claire. It's a question of what's best for your mother. 
there will be lots of people here from the university. It could be very awkward for her. I'm sorry. I just don't want her to have to suffer any more humiliation than she's already suffered. Upstairs? No. I got a car out front. Come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, Dr. Peterson, I'm so glad you could come. Yeah, call me Phil, will you please? Oh, sure. This is my wife, Antoinette. How do you do? Mm -hmm. Glad you could come. Got to be kidding. Yeah, there's Marvin. Hi, Marvin. How are you? She'll be here. <laughs> I promise. I talked to her. Nice, huh? <laughs> yeah. Take your clothes off. How about a drink? Yeah, a little drink. A little drink. Um, what are we having? Black label. What are you doing? We're making movies, princess. I'm gonna make you a big star. Uh, no one said anything about movies. I hate... <clears throat> Chuck and I made a deal. He didn't tell you? No. I paid a lot of money for you. And he said movies would be fine. Well, they're not fine. <laughs> We have a problem here, don't we? Uh, yeah. Sorry, Cupcake, but a deal is a deal. Claire? Oh, my God, what happened? 
happened, Claire? Sweetheart, what happened to you? I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry to ruin your part. No, no, no. What happened? Come on, let's get inside. Hey, okay, we're just giving her a lift. Let's go inside. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it? Take it easy. Go slow. Andy, would you put that light on in back? Uh, Malcolm, isn't that your daughter? Yes. You'd better make sure she's okay. Right. Can you get that tall chair? Yeah. It's all right. Just keep you down here. There's some iodine in the medicine chest. Mom, I'm okay. No, really, I'm okay. All right. Ben, uh, get some ice and put it in a dish towel, okay? Now, what happened to you? Who did this to you? No, you have to tell me who did this. What happened? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Sorry. Shh. What happened? Somebody take her to a hospital. Uh, just a minute. Ben, take, take her to a hospital. Just a minute. Dad. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Joan, there are people here. Joan, there are people here. Joan, there are people here! Malcolm, this is your daughter. Everyone, I need your attention for a moment. Joan! Um... I'm afraid we've had something of a family crisis here, and our daughter needs our undivided attention right now, so I'm going to have to ask you all to go home. I'm sorry. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, ben will help you with your coat. That's my issue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm David, let me know when it's done. Yes. Amy, go out there with Ben. Are you happy now? Is this why you came home? It wasn't enough you had to break your mother's heart? You had to come back here tonight and ruin her birthday? No, Dad, that is not going to work anymore. If Mom's heart was broken, it certainly wasn't by me. How dare you? Who do you? Stand. What I cannot stand. What you can't stand is that one person in this family didn't do exactly what you told them to do. All you care about is us following orders. The way you made mom take orders and the way you made Ben take orders. And all your whores, they probably take orders really well too, don't they? Claire, you are no longer a member of my family. And you're no longer a member of mine. <laughs> Joan. No, Malcolm. You can't talk your way out this time. I've been trying so hard to understand what's wrong with this family. But suddenly it seems so clear. You, you're what's wrong. You would sacrifice your own daughter to further your career. <sighs> I can forgive a lot, but this is unforgivable. No, no, don't, no, don't, don't do this, Joni. We can work through this. I have worked through it. That's exactly the point. Get your things, Malcolm, and get out.
Hey, Ben. Hello, Dad. How you been? I'm so glad you stayed in school. How's Amy? Good. She was just accepted at Columbia. Really? Terrific. Yeah. That's great. Too bad it's so far away. Actually, I've applied there too. We'll probably be moving back east this summer. Too bad about the chancellorship. Ah, well, you know. The end of the law school is plenty, right? Got a class. You know, I, I've got an apartment now, fifth in spring. I, I'd love it if you and Amy came down some night. We'd have dinner or something. <clears throat> Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> 